one thing's for certain, two things for sure. Ryan Murphy is going to Ryan Murphy every single time, but I think this story actually needed it. If you guys are new here though, my name is Ashley and this is my sweet perspective where I give my take on all things TV and movie related. And y'all know I'm here to put you on, okay? And we are back to talk an American sports story, Aaron Hernandez, presented to us by the Ryan Murphy, okay? And Y'all, my overall thoughts, uh, it's definitely giving an elevated biopic, you know, made for TV situation, which it is, um, but you can definitely feel Ryan Murphy's influence all over this story. Um, I, I think that it's well acted. Um, biopics are hard, right? Because we are depicting real life, actual events. Um, and I, and I think for what it is, it does a good job. Now, I will say I'm coming into this not knowing a ton about Aaron Hernandez. I've read an article here and there in the past. Um, and I'm, I'm really kind of wondering the motivation of the story. Um, because, again, just off initial impressions, it's tragedy. It's tragic from the beginning. Um, not only meeting he and his father, Dennis, who... Uh, it's kind of a menace to society, but we've seen fathers like this, right, in the past. Um, but just kind of this uh, overly homophobic situation at home. Clearly, he's in denial about what he's feeling, what's going on with himself. Uh, and then, you know, kind of burdened with all of this talent, right? And kind of what that uh, works into with all of these different influences and people doing what they think is best for him. Uh, but him never really fully grasping that. Right. And if, if that's the motivation that he is delivering in this series, because you do feel for Aaron in these first two episodes, you feel for him, but he's going to start getting on your nerves. Y'all let's get into this. Again, I'm going to be talking episodes one and two, um, but let's start with episode one, if it's to be. Now, if it's to be is something that we heard his father say to he and his brother over and over again from the time they're doing Pop Warner football, okay? So since they're young kids, he's he's making them train, he's making them run. And we discovered that the father, Dennis, um, was a good football player himself. He went to UConn uh, and actually had to leave school because he got into some trouble. A bank was robbed and somebody was unalived and he had to do his time. So now his mission, especially once he sees that Aaron has this gift, right, is to push him, push him, push him all the way to the league um, so that he won't make the mistakes that he made, right? And so, you know, we're meeting Aaron and kind of this struggle to be who his father wants him to be. His father is the disciplinarian in the house with um, what they're projecting or presenting is a very hostile um, and kind of domineering parental energy, right? He's very much in control of what Aaron can do, where he's going to school. We see a recruiter come from Notre Dame and it's like, no, you're going to UConn. Like your brother, his older brother is Dennis as well. Um, because you're going to play the whole season and I can keep an eye on you. Meanwhile, we have a mother who I don't want to say she's docile because she's going to give as good as she gets, but you can tell she's frustrated in the situation that she's in. Um, and again, dad runs this household kind of with an iron fist. She's fighting the power, the anger, the issues were all there. And so upon us originally seeing him, we see his first game. He's winning, baby. But after that, we see him in the truck with his boo-boo magoo. Next thing I know, hands on peen. Uh, and we know what time it is, right? Uh, you know, he gets home late from the diner, from the after, you know, the game situation and the truck. And the dad's like, somebody saw you. And Aaron's like, saw me do what? Saw me with my man, my man, my man. And he's like, no, you know, we saw you guys do this and this and this. And so Aaron's kind of relieved, but his dad is like letting him know all eyes are on you now. You're a star. You have places that you're going and you have to be twice as good. Now we heard this from daddy Pope. Okay. On scandal many, many years ago. And we know about this in the black community, but I didn't know it was, it was the same way in the Hispanic community. Uh, we find out that Aaron Hernandez is half Puerto Rican, half Italian. Um, and he's moving and operating in the world as his father instructed, you know, you have to be twice as good just to get the same amount 
as anybody else. Okay. Um, again, Aaron and his mom, it's interesting. So that same night, dad is saying he had some shooting pains in his stomach. Um, he's going to the doctor and he's just going to have to have a hernia surgery, surgery repair. Well, he's in school, honey. And we meet little Shyana, who apparently is his boo thing, you know, after all of the events. Um, but apparently they met in high school and she's giving him the answers because he can't focus. He gets caught out of the classroom and we discover that his father has passed away in this surgery. Now, this kind of puts his head in a tailspin and kind of gives him the opportunity to do some things he might want to do. Right. Shortly after that, we see them going to a basketball game because he doesn't just play one sport. He plays multiple sports. Okay. And so we get to the basketball game and his auntie and his mama into it. The auntie's like, you slept with my husband, lady. Aaron hears it, chases after the mom. And the mom's like, it's not what you think. It's not what you think. Next thing we see Aaron moving in with the auntie. Now, when he moves in with the auntie, this is when the trajectory starts to change a little bit, right? Because he's already considering different schools. Um, but you know, the auntie is a different element. The people over at auntie's house are a different type of people. Okay. Um, and you know, they're saying, you know, this is, you know, Dennis's boy, he's very mild mannered. I, you know, and I get it. Your mama kept you out the streets so that you could be all that you could be in the army. Right. And so he wants to belong because he feels like in the inside, Aaron knows who he is already. And he knows that he has this dark passenger. I'm going to put it in the words of Dexter. Okay. And that, you know, he, he's not one of them. And so he gets around this crowd and it's kind of like proving yourself, proving that you're hard, proving that you're tough. And we kind of see that evolution go, um, throughout this first episode. Again, he's dealing with the grief, making choices. He decides he's not going to go to Yukon, but he's going to go to Florida. Uh, and the coach there is like, you know, I know your dad just died. I know all that, but you need to come immediately. All right. We need to start training you now. You need to enter the program now. We'll get you through school. We'll get you through everything you need to do. Um, but we need to get you there so that you can you can start this journey. And mom is just like, you know, you don't want to be like your dad. You want to be more than him. You want to do more than him. And so that's pretty much where we leave off on episode one. Um, now let's get into episode two. Consequences with Extreme Prejudice, written by Stu Zickerman and Emily Bonnet, directed by Carl Franklin again, y'all. And episode two to me was kind of a deeper dive into Aaron, the man and who he was becoming, right? Because although he's still very young, this is his first time away from home, uh, his first time away from kind of the authority of his mother. We know his dad's gone. And I think he's still reeling from the loss of his father, who was kind of like the guiding force in everything, his career. Um, so again, he arrives at University of Florida under coach Urban Meyer. And I'm going to drop some clips here, um, some little articles about Urban Honey, because I agree with the laws down there in Florida. What kind of program are you running, sir? Cam Newton's still in computers. Um, he's, you know, Aaron involved in all kinds of stuff. The only reputable young man y'all got is Tim Tebow. And that's because he know the Lord and he's praying. You know what I'm saying? And so um, he's there and he is just meeting this, this football team. And how is he going to adapt? Is he going to be singled out? Because, you know, all of the energy is very homophobic in every space. And I don't know if this is like the culture of sports or if this is Ryan Murphy's influence on the story. Because we get into the locker room and we're seeing Big Peen. They're trying to sit it on people's foreheads and stuff. And he's living his best life until somebody calls him a derogatory word, or at least he thinks it's for him, um, but it's somebody else. So we see this boiling anger always with him right just underneath the surface um and it's bound to crack and so eventually in this episode we see him get into his first fight at a bar because he don't want to play the tab because football players drink free apparently um he's also kind of wrestling with his sexuality in these spaces um he had his boy toy back in connecticut he ain't got nobody down here so he on the sites baby one hand typing away the other hand going to town okay going to town on the microphone all right um, and so finally he gets the courage to meet up with someone, but just the idea that someone would see and out him sends him into a tailwind. So he starts hooking up with girls, but baby, while he hooking up with girls, he looking at his, his fellow football players. That's the time he's on. He gets into his first fight, gets arrested. Uh, and we meet apparently the, the school's attorney 
or maybe it's just the team's attorney who comes to save the day, no consequences. And so that makes me nervous because is this going to make him feel like he has carte blanche to do whatever he wants to do? Um, his friends from Connecticut, the, the G, triple G, OG OGs come down. Um, and it's some ish. As soon as they get there, they want to fight. They want to fuss. They want to cuss. And somebody ends up getting pew pewed. Okay. And so they're calling Aaron to the station. The lawyer again is there, Johnny on the spot. But Aaron, why do we keep finding ourselves in these situations? Who are you really? I'm really hoping that we get a better picture and a better idea of who he is um, intrinsically. And maybe that's the issue. Maybe he never got to discover who he was um, before all of this was over. You know what I mean? Um, but I will say I'm interested to see, you know, how this transition is going to go with him really living a double life off the field, um, but still excelling right on the field. And so getting all of these awards, these accolades, um, all the while dealing with this internal struggle of really who am I? Not just the sexuality, but I think there's other, I think there's other aspects to that and so I'm hoping the show really does a deep dive again overall it was entertaining I'm interested in knowing more I will be watching the rest of the season and covering it and we will be talking about this live weekly so make sure that you're locked in for that um yeah and drop your comments below um is this is this to just to tell a story do you think it's for us to see Aaron Hernandez in a different light let me know what your thoughts are um, how did you think the show was in these first two episodes? Will you be back next week to watch? I want to talk about it in the comments. Let's have a discourse. And if you're still here and you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all of the things for your good sis. <laughs> and I will see y'all in the next video. Thanks for watching. <laughs>